So now, uh, last time we looked into some of the passive features, right? Uh, like uh, very thermal and uh, roof pond system, and also we talked about earth sheltered structures. Uh, below the earth, the temperature does not change so much. So now, overall, let us look into design for thermal efficiency. Generally, objective is to obtain a design for maximum thermal efficiency, right. So, that is what would be our uh, energy efficiency of building, you know. So, thermal efficiency we are talking of, which should actually translate into minimization of energy load in condition building, minimization of energy load in condition building, right, or maximization of thermal comfort throughout the year. That should be our objective. Objective would translate into this either minimization of because we you know we want to maximize the thermal efficiency, which would mean minimization of energy load in condition building or maximization of thermal comfort throughout the year. So, which actually would be something like you know uh, mathematical optimization process, and I can write it like this minimize z, which is equals to energy load, energy load. Z equals, z equals to energy load, which is a function of decision variables. If you have been associated with any kind of an optimization process, decision variables are basically on which on which you want to take the decision, on which you want to take the decision, right? It, it will emerge through more or maximize thermal comfort, which is also a function of decision variable, right? In other words, this can be equals to minimization of deviation from comfort range, minimization of deviation from comfort range. So, that is what is our objective, that is what is our objective, right? That is what is our objective, all right? So, decision variables are materials in the wall or construction, construction in the wall. These are decision variables. I can, I can take you know I can choose this. So, decision variables are chosen at their optimal level such that my objective function is maximized or minimized. So, wall construction I choose in such a manner. Similarly, roof construction, type of glass, shape, orientation, you know dimensions etcetera. These are, these are shading, daylighting, size, placing of window, ceiling height type of occupancy, surrounding environment, all these are decision variables, all these are decision variables, right? All these are decision variables. Location, budget, color, texture. Now, budget normally would not be a decision variable, but might be a constraint. What you call it can be, it can be, you know, it can be that you want to do within a given budget. You might maximize even life cycle cost, you know, minimize life cycle cost, minimize life cycle cost or life cycle maximize life cycle performance. Location is also a constraint, these are given to you. Location, budget, etcetera are given. So, these are kind of decision variables you encounter in thermal design of building. So, most important of all these parameters are wall material, roof material or construction, I will say I rather like to call them construction, there will not be one material, roof construction. So, not material, materials, many of them may be there because it can be a layered constructions. Type of glass that you are using, shape, orientation. Therefore, decision design process will involve selecting the right combination of design parameters or values of the decision variable for with minimum energy consumption or maximization of thermal comfort, right? So, in the building. So, that is that's actually your design process should be. Now, generally we define something called backward analysis. Backward analysis is first determine the, you know, first basically you find out, choose a solution, then analyze it, right. So, first you choose a solution and then find out and you repeat this process to get the best. So, is an analysis determine properties of the input of a program. In, in the in the properties or from the properties or context of the outputs. Basically, 
well I think I will not complicate it in by this kind of state, state, statements. It is given various building parameters compute the, res, compute the resulting energy implication and go on improving upon them. That is what the statement is. You choose something, backward analysis. You know backward analysis first you choose, find out the performance, then change your choices, repeat these performances right? and try to find out come up to the optimal level from there or best from there. Such design of course restricts because you see you know many of our design process actually involves even even structural design for example. You first choose a section but that must be based on constraint also for example very simple case of reinforced concrete beam design the height you know the architectural requirement might specify the clear height from float to the ceiling level. Therefore, beam depth is actually there will be constraint. But you design you decide the beam depth right in the beginning. Then you find out through analysis the amount of reinforcement you require. So, you see it is a kind of a somewhat backward analysis. But supposing I know I know for the given load. Now, supposing I know the load and from there directly I was able to calculate out the reinforcement and the size given the constraints also that would have been forward analysis right at the moment we have to because it is dependent on density properties of the material. So, uh, first you choose because mass it will depend upon you know size of the section E i etcetera etcetera whatever it is. So, therefore, we do a you know sort of a backward analysis in many design. So, such a method but it restricts it restricts basically depending upon how large is your problem simple RC design it may not be that complicated, but in a in a system where you have very large number of parameters not only the amount of reinforcement and depth here the D you know fixed cover etcetera etcetera depth effective depth of the beam and reinforcement quantity that is our uh, that is our variable design variable B being fixed. So, if there are too many of them then doing this backward analysis might take a lot of time and it will restrict the scope as well as the quality of results considerably because it implies that building is already designed you have already designed it then you are analyzing it finding out the performance time and again. So, forward analysis is something different in this one which determine the properties of the output that is your performance straight away from the properties and inputs required. For example, you, you, you know if, it, if you are able to find out the wall choose the type of wall that is best suited you have you have you know like say this in case of reinforced concrete design same example that I was talking about. Supposing I give you the load, load combinations all that and just you know that and constraints are also given that depth, depth cannot exceed this much right because of the architectural reasons. Supposing the procedure is there which will straight away directly calculate out the size of the section you know or size of the section or amount of reinforcement etcetera etcetera then that is a forward analysis you do not have to assume anything in the beginning in that case, but conventionally we do assume. So, backward analysis will assume the design first analyze it find out whether it satisfy the performance then change the design again if required and go on doing this forward analysis on the other hand should be able to find out state of the solution. So, that is what it is that means determine the levels of decision variable from minimum energy consumption in this context minimize the energy consumption and what is the values of the decision variable or what is the type of wall I should choose that is what is backward analysis. Such backward analysis process I mean forward analysis process would always require you know is done testing a number of design alternatives and computing the thermal performance of each one find out the best. So, so, so that that you know that if you can inbuilt in an optimization problem that becomes much better. So, backward analysis take very long time for best solution tedious process not necessarily give the best solution cannot give global optimum till date most of the work on building thermal analysis vision ok that is not not really of our interest forward analysis can give you the best solution can give global optimal solution if you are using an optimization process can be done through you know only through optimization process. In fact, it is possible to do structural optimization also, but anyway that is not our concern here. 
So, thermal design process a large number of choices of design parameters for greater degree of energy performance is required to optimize and design the best or nearly the best option right or from this choices actually within these choices. Therefore, there is a need to find out optimal solution. So, optimization can give you best thermal design, optimization can give you best thermal design right. Okay. So, in building optimization process various parameters are qualitative and they are discrete of course. For example, shape although you can talk in terms of aspect ratio, you can talk in terms of aspect ratio, but supposing I am mixing up rectangular and L shaped or T shaped. In that case they are basically qualitative you cannot quantify you can call them shape number 1, shape number 2, shape number 3, but in a given rectangular type you might vary with aspect ratio even then some sort of quantification may be possible, but very easily we can understand that they are actually qualitative you know. So, you can call shape number 1 or you can codify them shape number 1, shape number 2, shape number 3, shape 4 n etcetera etcetera. So, you see there many of them could be qualitative and remember they are discrete also aspect ratio you might vary from 1 to 2 to say 1 to 2.1, 2.2 etcetera etcetera in a continuous manner, but still it will be discrete actually usable it will be only discrete because aspect ratio 1 to you know 1 is to 2 or 1 is to 2.1 does not make any sense really. So, these are discrete and many a times they can be qualitative orientation similarly you might define the major axis with respect to due north and south. So, you can change in angle maybe made it even continuous, but really practically practical situation it will be discrete long axis parallel to north south. So, this could be orientation 1 orientation 2 could be same one is para, you know parallel to uh, northeast to southwest no. So, orientation 1 or so these are qualitative you can codify them may be possible to use them in continuous manner, but not really practically usable. So, basically they are qualitative and discrete some of the some of the you know some of them are qualitative and discrete. So, optimization procedure incorporate that qualitative and discrete variable right they should qualitative and discrete variable like any kind of evolutionary algorithm helps their best. So, I will not discuss about this algorithms or tools which are there now there are so many of them. Uh, so, that I will not talk, but I will just talk about possible alternatives. So, that you understand that this process can be fairly involved process. For example, form alternatives I can have rectangular with a ratio of 1 is to 1 cuboid right. So, ground floor area building height a roof area a is roof area is a x square and wall areas then x into any wall would be x into h, h is a height. So, x is root over a you know the same I can do some geometrical thing which we did earlier. So, this is one kind of shape 1 is to what cuboid I can have 1 is to 2 and then again similar sort of thing I can do right some relationship I can obtain with respect to x supposing h is being constant number of story height is constant then x can be a variable which can vary in this manner depending upon. So, if it is 3 1 is to 4 that this you know so this could be 0 0.5 under root a x that is that is this dimension the dimension and everything else can be expressed in terms of x. So, this sort of but then there you can see they are discrete actually first one had x equals to under root a right if it is a square in plan if it was 1 is to 2 then it is 0 0.70 under root a this is 0 0.5 under root a. So, they are discrete steps. So, they are discrete T shape similarly you can talk about some area related to x x is the smallest dimension or dimension shown here this is x you know this is x this is x. So, this is x this is the dimension this is x this is x. So, actually you can actually you know it can take several sort of shape you can take cross shapes and uh, some basic relationship you can obtain 
as so therefore that you know the variations you can understand this is as you can take this sort of shape 1392 but will be constrained by site constraints will be constrained by site constraints also by by loss so the constraint because you may not be able to use all the space in your plot according to the floor area ratio or such restrictions so they will form again constraints but shapes should be choose, you know various shapes one can take one can take all these shapes all these shapes and you can see the relationship of the smallest dimension to the floor area you can obtain so for example one can choose this eight shapes right eight shapes one can choose and one can choose orientations several of them say i choose the eight orientation again this for the cuboid right north and south inclined 45 degree right so i can have various kind of orientation so i have now 64 possibilities out of which i'll be choosing the of most the best in fact i should be choosing best but i have taken only two variable right so unshaded it could be shaded or unshaded there could be more complications involved so unshaded for major part of the day oriented towards etc etc east to west and so on so we can we can choose that way roof there can be several constructions i can choose here i am showing eight only there can be n number of them so u values are known all other properties actually i can determine and find out brick tile mortar rcc plus insulation acc thermal thermolite mortar rcc plaster etc etc and uh, wall similarly there can be large number of options available typically this is shown just eight of them are shown brick 200 millimeter thick brick this is modular brick we thought to you know just showing you that way but one can choose what is available in the market so you see glass alternatives glass alternatives various uh, uh, you know sun energy green it's from commercial ones so there is no gap fill thickness 6 millimeter u value solar heat gain factor this property should be known to me so i can choose some 8 of you know 8 9 10 or 12 or as many number of them therefore m decision variables and each one can take nj values 18 you know i have shown i have shown shape orientation wall roof glass five it could be m number of them i have not taken many i have not taken many actually right so there will be m number of decision variables five decision variables i have taken m number of decision variables and each one can take supposing nj values then total number of possible is product of nj this is this is the product this is you know sigma is a sign for summation this is for product so you will have nj that means in our case it was 18 to 18 to 18 to 8 but supposing you know i am varying for example wall construction each layer variation is possible so the m can be very large in fact somewhere people have recorded wall to window area window to wall area ratios i have not taken many it can be 20 25 or such kind of decision variables or 20 you know 30 30 40 order of those now just imagine i am getting eight of each one of them 18 to 18 to 8 m 40 that many number of possible options i have available in a, my case it was you know combinations if i see wall i can choose eight ways roof i can choose eight ways therefore totally i can choose from 64 solutions shape eight so 18 to 18 to 8 orientation another eight so eight to the power actually four in my case if i am taking eight of each nj of each m such cases that may become turned out to a very huge number and these are all discrete values you know discrete points for example the domain would be i mean if i draw it in it will be m dimensional hyperspace you know if there are two it will be two dimensional space so two dimensional space i would have points like this some points discrete values where this let's say is wall construction rest all i have fixed and this is orientation i'm just saying this too or shape and orientation you know i have fixed rest all are, are all fixed so there are 64 possibilities i choose the best out of them right so two dimensional if in our case in general case it will be m dimensional hyperspace m dimensional hyperspace with 
this many number of options. So, optimally, optimality from above number of discrete options, right? And this x i j values, value taken, for example, this is you know x x x value, x is the value orientation I can take x, i stands for i th value, this will vary from 1 to n and j stands for 1 to m. So, any value x i j, x i j is any value, they may be direct or coded variables. For example, u values that will be direct value. So, orientation will be some sort of coding you can do. Direct values sometime may not be possible, may be possible, may not be possible. So, this is what is the scenario. And second thing is our objective function is also implicit. It is not straight away like I have written earlier the function of decision variables, but this is not explicitly defined. I cannot write you know this energy load if I call it E, if I call it E, it is not very easily I cannot write it like you know some constant into B into x i j plus or square even in nonlinear form I just cannot write them because it, it involves a complex say simple admittance procedure would mean calculating the cooling load or finding out the internal temperature finding out deviation of the internal temperature from comfort range. So, this is only implicit, this is not explicit. So, I you know my objective function calculation would be implicit and so many decision variables and therefore, one has to resort to actually you know. So, it is actually implicit that is what I said, this implicit, implicit objective function which you can calculate out. Through. So, you will have m dimensional hyperspace out of which you got to fix up, find out the best and your objective function is actually implied. Either you calculate out through admittance procedure, through admittance or similar procedure, anything which is there available to you, admittance is easily programmable. Remember it will have lot of errors in real, but if you are comparing from one set of solution, one solution to another solution, if the errors are similar comparatively the one which is said to be better will still remain better even if, if the error is same. So, you can use this this admittance or similar procedure which may not be very robust for optimization purpose because as long as my epsilon error you know error relative error from one solution to another solution is similar the error do not is not percentage error is same then actual true value plus true true value true plus error true 1 plus true 2 plus epsilon error is same. If I say that true 2 is better than true 1, solution 1, 2 is better than 1 by an approx approximate method and if I use a robust method and still get the same answer it is fine. So, this should be used one can use this for calculating your objective function for example, find out the energy load or find out internal temperature and find out the deviation of this internal temperature from the comfort zone either plus or minus which I mentioned earlier to you and that is how one can actually do the design right. If initially we looked into each component how do they affect that is what was purpose of our course. Optimization process is not part of this course, but this is how one can do if you want to do you can do it that way. So, I think this is what our discussion about thermal design, design our discussion about thermal design. I mean to look at the natural ventilation first we should know what is the purpose of natural ventilation. What is the purpose of natural ventilation? There are two three purpose right. First one is minimum air flow necessary to remove carbon dioxide and replenish the oxygen right. Minimum needed to remove the carbon dioxide and replenish the oxygen this we call as hygienic ventilation right. So, also in kitchen you might have to remove the smoke and some gases. So, therefore, you know these are also important. Then if you want to remove some heat, if you want to remove some heat then we have seen that C V delta T is the amount of heat that can be removed for constant number of air change C V is one third and we approximately we said. So, this is the amount of heat it will remove if the outside temperature is lower it will take away the heat from inside through air exchange. 
So, that is C v into delta t. Then lastly, we have seen that if the velocity of air around the skin is high, it can remove heat by heat by convection as well as evaporation, evaporation. So, for comfort ventilation, this is called comfort ventilation. So, there are three purposes. First one is most important, hygienic ventilation, right? That is a minimum, that is you have to have in any space, fresh air requirement is hygienic requirement, otherwise suffocate, suffocation would occur. So, that is we call as hygienic ventilation. The second part is on top of that I might, you know, use it. So, for example, in the night time when the outside air is cool, I might use it to remove the heat, right? And like mean scenario, mean temperature, remember C V delta T. So, outside mean is usually lower. So, I might, you know, ensure that I am talking of only naturally conditioned building, not air conditioned building at all. In air conditioned building, obviously, the air will be supplied through the duct, cold, cool, cool air, and that will mechanically you remove the heat through air, you know, you know, like supplying cool air, which will get heated up and it will it will be removed. So, that part we are not discussing here. Natural ventilation, I might, if I ensure there is a sufficient ventilation, then mean temperature might, you know, like cooling, cooling might occur through that, depending upon the situation. Then comfort ventilation means distribution of air velocity within the room, because I might have a flow, inflow, you know, ventilation, you know, inflow of air into the room and obviously equal amount of outflow from the room equal, you know, the volume of the room remains constant. So, so there can there will be an outflow cross ventilation as we call it from the room, but that may not ensure sufficient air velocity in all corners of the room. So, air velocity is important and therefore, that is related to comfort ventilation.